Hi, Sharon Bell here. I'm progressing on through this series of how to play the various scales and now we're on to the scales of B minor in the various forms. If you refer to the cards and the links in the description at the end of this video, there's lots of playlists that will help you to look up why we're playing these particular notes. There's lots of information about the various minor scales and the various forms that they're constructed in and how to work that out and also how to work out how they're linked to the various major scales. And there's a whole formula, the circle of fifths, which explains how we keep progressing and adding these sharps and flats. In fact, there's also a video that um, I'm hoping you'd like to watch t saying why bother practicing these scales. I really, really enjoy scales and it saddens me that they they sometimes get a bit of a bad rap because you know it is hard work but it's immensely satisfying and it's so so important and I do go more into that in that video. If you're practicing these various skills because you're working towards an exam, if you check out my website that's in the description um, and the links at the end of the video and or just check out SharonBill.com, I've got various uh, scale boxes uh, which I explain in a video that help you to work out a rotor of what scales to practice and when. And I've done a bit of the work for you in itemising all of that out. If you are working towards exams, there's no doubt you'll be needing to do your theory as well. And it's really good because music's always kind of over overlapping and interlinking. It's always interconnected. And so if you are working towards theory exams, or if you're not, you perhaps should think about it because I really think it's a fab thing. Uh, I've written a how to take your ABRSM music theory exam, loads of really, really great exam techniques and tips that I've learned over the years. Uh, so that's that. Um, there's loads of videos coming also to help you with your music theory. I really recommend that you do get into that. But for now, we're going to crack on with the scale of B minor. Now, B minor is related to the major scale of D major, and so it's going to have a key signature of F sharps and C sharps. Now, in the harmonic minor form, we also now add an accidental of a raised seventh. So that raised seventh would mean A is now sharpened, so we've got A sharps. So practically what that means is when you're playing B harmonic minor, you're going to be playing F sharps, C sharps and A sharps. Now in the right hand that forms the normal 3-4-3 three, three fingering pattern. And I don't know why, I can't quite explain it, but I really like the feel of this scale under my fingers. I'll show you what I mean here. So we've got B, C sharp, D, tuck under after finger 3, then we've got F sharp, G, A sharp, B, and I just like how that just fits in under my fingers. Um, so let's have another go at two octaves because that establishes the fingering pattern and that harmonic minor snake charmer sound is also quite appealing. Um, uh, back to the scale pattern, I digress there, a little in my enthusiasm. So we're going to do 3-4-3 three, three fingering with F sharps, C sharps and A sharps and if you want to do even more octaves, you just keep repeating that pattern over and over. So the two octaves establishes the pattern. So here we go, B harmonic minor, two octaves. C sharp, three tuck under, F sharp, G, A sharp, tuck under, B, there's a home note. C sharp, D, tuck under after three, F sharp, G, A sharp, B. No need to repeat the top note, turn it straight around, A sharp, G, F sharp, E, 3 over, D, C sharp, B, A sharp, G, F sharp, E, 3 over, C sharp, B. And so apart from here, this little bit, you're alternating natural sharp, natural sharp because of the way the progression goes. Let's have one more look at that right hand. Three, tuck under. Stretch, four, tuck under. Three, on the D, tuck under. 
turn it around three over four over onto your A sharp stretch to the G three you've always got to watch out for that stretch after you raise seventh down to the next note down because we don't want to end up playing the A allocation twice it's sharpened so that's now the A note allocated in the scale and we need to get right back to the G you just need to watch out for that little bit there now in your left hand because of the way the black notes fall in that pattern we can't begin with finger five we have to begin with finger four and then after that, the fingering pattern unwraps four, three, four, because we're gonna need finger four in this bit here. So we have to begin to kind of unwrap that fingering process ready to begin this pattern here. So we begin with finger four, C sharp, D, E, and then we need four over again, G, A sharp, B, and now we're into the pattern so it's three over onto the C sharp four over onto the F sharp stretch to the A sharp finish back down we go now so this is the four finger in section tuck under make sure you get all the way to E this is the three section B we need the home key B a sharp stretch to the G, F sharp, tuck under making sure you get to the E, C sharp, finish. Let's have one more go at that. together because we're going to go in similar motion we're going to have the sharps falling at the same time but the fingering patterns are going to have to stagger a little bit we're going to have to begin in this particular starting position to then unwrap however I find it easy to imagine it in groups and I imagine that within this group of notes I'm going to be need to use your finger three and within this group of notes here I need to be used fingering four in either hand. So let's begin. Your right hand begins straight away with the three, four, three, and your left hand just takes a little bit of time to catch up. So use these visual clues to help you to know which grouping you're in. So here we go. This is the three section, so we need to have our thumb under here. Now this is the four section. So it's four in your left, then four in your right, home. This is your three section, so it's three over in your left, then three in your right. This is your four section, so four in your left, now four in your right, and now we reverse it. So this is still the four section, so it's four in your right, then your left is four, tuck under. So this is your three section, so three over in your right, three in your left tuck under so now we're into this four section so it's four over in your right now four and then under in your left making sure you get all the way to the E and then this is the three section here in your right and then you would tuck if you were carrying on but because we finished our two actives we just finish here let's have one more go at that it's different, it's different to the usual standard fingering that goes three, three, four, four, three, three. However, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's difficult. I think it falls in quite nicely in these groupings, but it does need a little bit of practice. So by all means, pause, go back, check things, practice it over. And then when you feel like you're getting it a little bit more fluent, you can then progress to building up the tempo a little bit at a time. Don't suddenly go mad. And then you can think in twos to help it progress a little bit more freely. There we go, 
would be harmonic minor similar motion. Now let's look at B harmonic minor hands together in contrary motion going in opposite directions over two octaves. Again, the fingering pattern doesn't fit into the standard 343 fingering and we have to adjust it. And so if you were playing just hands separately, you'd begin on finger four. And so now as we descend going outwards in the left hand that descends, we'll finish on finger four and we won't use our little finger. So we need to remember F sharps and C sharps as our key signature and then A sharps is our raised seventh. And so we end up with finger fours in this section and finger threes tucking in this section. So here we go, starting on B, stepping outwards, we've got our raised seventh straight away and our C sharp. Three in your right hand tucks under but four in your left. in your right, three in your left, tucking outwards, three in your right tucks under, four in your left, and we finish without using your little finger, back in we come, four in your left, three in your right, now four in your right, three in your left, four in your left, three in your right, home to finish. It's actually not as difficult as perhaps it at first seems. Of course it takes some practice to get under your fingers. However it's a natural reasonable thing to expect that your finger fours are going to have to be in this busy section whereas your finger threes are going to be in this busy section. So you're working with opposite fingerings. When you're talking with finger three here it's going to be four here. When you're talking with finger three here it's going to be four here. Let's have one more go at that. everything it's always down to practice 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 makes perfect you will learn by your mistakes if you're finding it especially difficult you might want to revert back to hands separately however if you're practicing in readiness for a country minor scale practice beginning at the top with your left hand and then come back up And you're ready to slot that back to a hands together pattern. Again, we always learn by our mistakes. It is a little bit tricky, but you'll soon get there if you just keep practicing. Good stuff. Now let's have a look at B minor in its melodic form. Again, I've mentioned the links and the cards to describe uh, in the descriptions to show you how we can explain all of these different scales. There's lots of videos explaining why these scales are worked out the way they are. And so the melodic minor still ascends and descends with the related key, which is related to D major. So we're always gonna have F sharps and C sharps. However, in the melodic minor ascending version, we've got to also raise the sixth and the seventh. So we're gonna have G sharps and A sharps as well. So ascending, we will have F sharps, C sharps, G sharps, A sharps. And then when we come back down, we'll lose the raised sixth and seventh and we'll just come down with the key signature of F sharps and C sharps. Let's have a look what that looks like on the piano. So we're beginning with B and then your right hand, it's still that same three, four, three fingering pattern. So we've got a D natural here, which incidentally gives us our related major key. Tuck under after finger three. And now here's the F sharp that's part of our key signature. Now we've got the raised sixth, raised seventh, home. There's our C sharp, D natural, tuck under after three, E natural. F sharp is part of our key signature. G sharp raised sixth, 
A sharp raised seventh. Let's have another look at that. What that means is that you're actually playing all of these black notes and just the C sharp as well. You've just got to be careful which white notes you're playing here. It depends. You can either work it out just looking at that and adding up the sharps in terms of the key signature raised sixth and seventh. But I mentioned that we've got this minor third. It's almost like you're playing B major but just changing that third note and then you're carrying on in the scale of B major. Tuck under all the sharps, B, C sharp, there's our minor third note, all the sharps. So that might be another way to help you to think about it. So now we're going to descend, we're going to come back down with no extra accidentals of raised sixths and sevenths. We're literally going to come down in the key signature of F sharps and C sharps. So here we come back down again. Three over, sharp. Four over, sharp. Three over. So it's like you're coming down in the key of D major, but we're beginning and ending on B. Let's have a look at that in the left hand. So again, the fingering is going to have to change and we have to begin with finger four to unwrap the fingering to then go four, three, four. And the two octave fingering pattern establishes the pattern for all of the octaves. If you want to extend it to three or four octaves, you just keep repeating the process over once you've unwrapped at the beginning. So we're going to have a key signature of F sharps and C sharps, and then we need to have G sharps and A sharps as our raised sixth and seventh as we ascend. So here we go with that. So it's beginning with finger four, and then we need four over again to get all of these black keys. Home, three over here, four over for all of the black keys. So this is the fourth section here, so although we're not going to be playing all the black keys now, we just need the F sharp with finger four, tuck under, C sharp with finger three, tuck under, this is our four on F sharp, tuck under, three, if we were carrying on we'd tuck under but we finished our two octaves, so we just finish on finger four so it does fit quite nicely in your fingering pattern you know it's got to be threes here and fours here and that will work in both hands so although the fingering isn't occurring at exactly the same moment you know in these groups it's going to be fours and in these groups it's going to be threes so let's have a go at that hands together now it takes a little bit of practice make sure you practice it hands separately a good few times by all means press pause stop come back to it again and now we'll have a look hands together. So we've got F sharps and C sharps, and then we've also got G sharps and A sharps as we go up, beginning with four in your left, three tuck under. So this is our four section now, all the black notes. Three over, this is the C sharp section. All the black notes, so we need four over here. Now we don't need all of these sharps, we just need F sharp coming back down, but we're still in the fourth section. Four in your left. Now this is the three section, we just need a C sharp. Tuck under now. Four over in your right. Just the F sharp, tuck under. Three over in your right. And finish. Uh, it needs a little bit of practice. It's not one of the most super difficult scales, but it is a little bit tricky. So by all means, practice it hands separately, then hands together. And as you become more confident in it, then we can kind of give it a little bit more rhythmic fluidity by counting in twos. So let's try that. melodic minor. I hope that's been helpful to you. Thanks for watching. By all means, I suggest that you go back, stop, press, press pause, that would be more helpful, 
and just keep playing that scale hand separately then hands together um, I hope it's helped you I hope it's encouraged you look back at the previous videos look at how these work out why they work out um, and just check out the various um, links to help you expand that knowledge if that's been helpful to you if you subscribe to my channel that would be great and then you'll be sure not to miss out on any of the information there's so much uh, bubbling around in my head that I'm waiting to get out to you I'm having to run to keep up with myself really uh, if you can hit the like button that would be really fab thanks that would be great for me and show me that I'm helping and being uh, useful to you out there Thanks for watching, till next time, bye.